and welcome back to Let's Talk PMA. Today on episode number 11, we are going to be talking about outside influences. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe below. Um, I'm Allie. And I'm Jessica. And today uh, we do have a special guest. This is one of my former college mates. We play basketball together. Um, Sage, I want to welcome you. Thank you for coming so much. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> um, Sage, we'd love to have you share just a little bit about yourself, um, your experiences with sports, and because um, I know you've done some coaching and playing and everything. So um, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. So um, I have played basketball since fourth grade. Um, I did the travel team deal in high school. Um, played high school and um, then I played at Spokane Falls with Allie um, and I have got to coach some very young kids um, and as well as kind of assist some uh, I would say elementary age is the oldest I have uh, gotten to um, yeah but I've always loved being a part of the basketball world um, and yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we're excited to talk to you about outside influences, as I'm sure with the young kids, both of you, you have, um, you can see a lot of that in them now, as well as how um, outside influences affected you guys. When you were playing, I know for myself in high school, college, I was always even today, um, always affected by outside influences. So, um, Ali, what do you think? Um, what, how would you define outside influences? Um, I feel like outside influences can definitely have um, a very wide variety of what can be them. Um, so it can be people, your friends, your family, significant others, um, people in the stands, your parents, um, it can also be your coaches or your teammates, or it could be something more internal, like um, goals that you have, because you want to reach a goal. So obviously, they're going to influence you in the way that you perform and the way that you put in effort, um, as well as like judgment, a fear of judgment um, by other people. That's an influence that's going to affect you in some way, whether it's mentally or physically. Um, in any sport that you do play. Um, so outside influences are things that affect you. That's really, it's an effect. Um, it can be a person, a place, a thing, all of it um, kind of just comes together as an effect on you in some way, shape or form. And it can be a positive or a negative effect. Exactly, yeah. For sure. So girls, I know for me, when I was in high school and especially my junior year, I had a big goal for myself to um, be the best, best shooter on my team. So I had set goals for myself. I went into the gym every morning, you know, I shot, I did the extra and I met my goal, but it seemed like after I met my goal and I went into my senior year my outside influences, my friends and um, boyfriends, whatever it was, um, really came into play. And so my thoughts of, yeah, I'm so, I was great last year. I'm going to be great this year. Um, but I didn't work as hard and I really, um, really got into what my friends thought and were influenced by how I needed to act around them to make them like me, to make others, um, to impress others. And it wasn't me anymore. And so my goals and my strength within myself really diminished because 
um, I was trying to please others all the time. And, you know, and so I didn't end up going, I, you know, met some of my goals, but I ended up not playing in college as much as I wanted to, because I didn't have the work ethic that I should have, because I let all those outside influences affect me. And I look back now and think, gosh, I could have completely been a totally different person if I would have had that self-confidence and I could have, you know, been way better in sports as well as a better friend, you know, if I would have just been myself and been true to me. Yeah, I think um, all of us, well, I mean, I don't know, I don't want to speak for everybody, but a lot of people can relate to that in different ways. Um, I can relate to that, obviously, um, but Sage, I would like to hear what what kind of outside influences um, have you experienced um, in your time playing sports? Yeah, um, I've definitely experienced um, plenty outside influences. Um, I would say some of my time with travel basketball, I would say a lot of the outside influences would be like kind of a toxic team environment, um, even toxic between parents, uh, even definitely, you know, coaches. Uh, it definitely affected my confidence on the court, my confidence at practice. Um, I also definitely struggled with, um, in high school, I got on a medication and those felt like it felt like small outside influences, but they really impacted me as far as like, you know, side effects. Um, am I sleeping? Am I eating? Um, how does this affect me? How does this medication affect me at practice? Um, you know, do I open up to my coach about it? Um, and unfortunately I did. Uh, I felt like I could have that communication with my coach. Um, and actually it kind of, bit me in the butt later on uh and you know after maybe a not the best game in high school my coach would kind of have talks like well how's your medication going and um I just kind of felt like it was a little bit uh I felt so out of control of that piece and I, it kind of always felt like others expected you to have that under control because it's not you know it's not family issues or um it's not super emotional it's just it's genuinely like my personal well-being like my health and stuff so it's kind of the stuff you don't really see so how would you right now if you look back at that you know how would you would you redo it in a different way um I definitely I mean I like being able to relate to other teammates later on I was able to relate to other teammates um, but I think I would do it differently I I don't think I would um, choose to open up and or to a coach and say I mean unless I I would say certain ones in the past you know um, I probably had you know between high school sports travel and AU I probably had about eight coaches or so um, I think some some people you really know who to connect to um and um it I did do it twice with another coach as well later in college and it kind of you know it was definitely something that was held against me and I I would regret it I would definitely not um open up about those things which is unfortunate um yeah for sure because I thought it for if I were a coach it would be very helpful to say, okay, you know, this is what's going on. And this is, this is how I learn. And, you know, this is the best I'm doing and just to, you know, be transparent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Your self-confidence in that, in that realm also deplenishes because you, now you don't have that confidence in your coach to know that he has your back or they have your back. Totally. Yeah. I mean, Sage, I know we kind of went through that whole thing together in college. Um, I know how hard that was for you. Um, and it's like you said, it's really unfortunate because your coach is supposed to be someone who you can trust um, and you can entrust with secrets. You 
which is not necessarily a secret, but just like more personal, more sensitive subjects or topics um, so that they can be on the same page as you and then they can understand you in a different way. And I know from my experiences with our college teams and your experiences and us kind of going through it together, um, I definitely think about that a lot um, as a coach now is I try to like think about what what are these kids going through at home or what are their what things um, do they not tell me that they have to experience or you know if it's a medication or family troubles or whatever like am I going to be there am I going to be someone that they're going to feel confident and um, trustworthy you know because I would I would rather them tell me and then I can be a backbone for them, um, not use it against them. But I, you know, as a coach, I need to be able to have that kind of relationship and that kind of trust. Um, because you do spend so much time, especially with sports, um, you spend so much time with your team, your coaches, and you go everywhere together. You like are a family, you become a family. And if you have one person in your family who you don't trust, are you truly a whole family? You know what I mean? Um, so that's something that's super, super, super important, especially for coaches. Like really think, do you think that if your kids had something um, important that they wanted to share, but they weren't sure if they could trust you with it, you maybe you need to do a self-check, do a self-check on yourself and really see, um, are you being a positive influence or are you being a negative influence? Okay. Yeah, I definitely, um, I agree with that. And the other part too is, I think if you do have teammates who trust you enough to come up to you with such personal information um, or players, I think you should truly value that because it took courage to even come up and talk to coach about this or to come up and talk to, you know, your your best bud on the team or, um, you know, even school, um, is a big deal for some people, but, um, I think we kind of forget to value that. I don't know, whatever people are trusting us to like hear or what they're going through. Yeah. And I think it also has a big part with parents too, because like that information that was your choice for you to make to um, communicate with your teammates, to communicate with your coach. That's your choice. That's not your parents' choice. And I know that I have had some parents communicate to me things that are going on in one of my players' lives that isn't necessarily relevant. Um, like, obviously it's hard and um, like I feel for her, but at the same time, she didn't tell me and she still doesn't talk to us about it. And that's her choice because she doesn't want to, or she doesn't feel the need to, she doesn't think that it um, affects her game and that's okay. But I think a parent needs to understand that if their kid wants to tell their pay or their coaches or their teammates that it's their choice to make instead of like parents just going and saying oh I think you might need to know this but at that same with that same thought in mind though Allie if there's something major going on with your kid and you think gosh her performance may be off or his performance may be off because this is happening I would really like the coach to know just in case they see something's off because the kids, you know, aren't always going to, because they are internal, they're not going to always reveal and they may not trust you enough. So I think I can feel for the parent in that realm too, because you want them to be able to perform. You want them to know that, gosh, if they're off, this could be a reason why. So maybe just be a little more sensitive to them or just be like aware that, hey, maybe I need to pull them aside and just say, hey, are you okay? Are you, you know, what's, is there anything that you would like to talk to me about? Just to open up, you don't have, they don't, you don't have to say, hey, your parents told me, 
but just say, hey, I see something's off. What if, you know, is there anything that you'd like to talk to me about? Yeah, and, and I agree. I definitely, I'm not saying not to communicate with the coach at all about it, but I don't think all the time, all of the details are necessary. I think you can definitely just say, hey, um, there's, you know, some life stuff going on, some family stuff going on. They're not going to be in the right headspace. Um, they're off. I know they're off. If you notice, feel free to communicate with them. And I think that's totally necessary. And I think that's amazing for parents to do, but I don't think that oversharing is necessary. It's, it's more the oversharing that I was referring to. Yeah, absolutely. I agree hundred um, percent. Another thing too, is that I feel like so often, I think in that situation, whether it's a parent watching their daughter or son, um, or whether it's the kids themselves, I feel like I feel like those players already sometimes they don't really recognize when their outside influences are affecting their game and sometimes they already totally know and sometimes that's also really hard but I think for parents or coaches sometimes to assume that because they had a bad game it's because of this you know I think that and Ali, I was telling you the other day, not everyone's 100% always looks the same every day. Like sometimes that is as great as you can play and that's, you are giving it all. And maybe you just had a horrible day and your dog died. Um, but that was your hundred percent for that game. And um, I think players and parents and coaches always forget, like, it's not always, you know, we can't always just hold that to that player when they probably already know or maybe they don't know, and maybe it was totally unrelated, and they just did have an off game, which is okay. Exactly. Yeah, and that's and that's life, you know. Until we recognize exactly what's happening, it's it is what it is, and it's okay as long as you're still giving 100 percent, the 100 percent as much as you can at that moment. Yeah, and okay, so I have I have a question for you guys. Um, going along with all of this, how do you not get influenced? Um, obviously, like we've talked about, there's a million different types of influences that can affect you. So how do we not get influenced? I don't think that, I don't think that where we can say we can't get influenced because like you said, we're always going to, but it's a matter of knowing ourselves enough to have enough self-confidence in who we are to be able to know how we want to react to those influences. So just like Sage said, you know, yes, I'm having this going on, but within me today, this is all I can give. And that's okay. Knowing that you're okay in that moment, but not being so influenced by that outside stuff that it just makes your whole world blow up but being able to still be in control of who you are definitely i agree with that i would say that everything definitely influences you of course um like you said but i would say i found i would gather my confidence from putting in the extra work and that would kind of that would reassure me, you know, if, if I'm struggling with confidence from coach, maybe coach doesn't trust me with something that I still had confidence knowing that when I go in, I've been working on my three point game, you know, all, you know, after practice every, every day for, you know, solid amount of time. That's where I totally get my confidence is honestly ignoring those outside things I mean you can't help but to not ignore it but focusing on exactly like you said what you can control and that's how much work and time and effort you've put in to your game right yeah yeah we, I mean we kind of talked about it a little bit and it, that confidence um, it comes from yourself um, confidence a thousand percent comes from yourself and that will affect how you react to influences. Um, your thoughts about the influences, are you taking them as they're detrimental? 
like mom, you had talked about earlier, your own story about your friends and wanting to, you know, fit in, wanted to make friends, wanted to be like other people. Um, that's your thoughts, right? So you're letting those thoughts of, oh, I need to be different. I need to be like these other people. That's bringing your confidence down and that's letting those overbearing thoughts um, take over. Yeah. And instead of just moving through it and understanding that they're going to be there, whether they like me or not. Right. Well, it's making us small. You know, we want to be big in this world. And the only way to be big is to be self-confident and to know that you are you and that's okay. And, but when we let all these other influences, if the negative, of course, and I think we've really touched on negative a lot. Um, but the negative influences, if we let those just break us down and we become small, we don't become our real selves. And so it's being confident within who we are and knowing that who we are is okay. And I'm going to work my butt off. I'm going to do whatever I can to complete my goals and to do whatever I can to be as big as I can within myself to be that barrier when those negative outside influences come. Now, when there's positive influences, of course, we want to suck all those in, right? We want, you know, we want our coaches, our mentors, our teachers, whoever it is, our teammates that are like empowering and, and um, positive to make us grow and to make us that, those, that big person that we want to be. Yeah. Um, I, I have, it, my influence is, um, I have a big one that is a, is a positive and a negative influence in one, um, which that happens too. It can be positive and sometimes and it can be negative in other times. My senior year of high school, um, throughout high school, I worked very, very hard at, in basketball. I spent 90% of my time in the gym, especially once I got the keys to my car. <laughs> I was always in the gym, putting in that extra work. Um, going into my senior year, my boyfriend and I, my current boyfriend, um, we started dating and it was a long distance relationship. And it, as a 17 year old girl in high school, oh my gosh, I have a boyfriend and I'm gonna spend all my time with him. I don't only wanna talk to him. And I let it consume me. Um, obviously, you know, we're, it's the beginning stages of a relationship. So obviously that's when you want to spend all the time and do everything. And I let myself be consumed by wanting to love him. And I let it take away from the time that I got to spend practicing and getting ready for my senior year of basketball. Um, going into our first day of tryouts, for my senior year, I stayed up until 3 a.m. talking to him on the phone when I had to be up at 8 a.m. the next day and had tryouts. And that impacted me. I was very tired the next day and I didn't play my best. So that's partially on me. And as I grew, as time went on, um, I learned that he enjoyed basketball as well. And he also wanted the best for me because he knew how important basketball was for me. So we learned to find a happy medium where I would still go to the gym and I would spend all my time there. I would work out, I would enhance my skills. I would keep working, keep working, keep working. Um, and it was okay not to be talking to him. And um, he would come and play with me as well. So eventually I took an influence that was negatively impacting me in my skills and in my sport. And I turned it into a positive where it was positive for me mentally. And it was positive for me in my skills and in my sport. Because you became confident in yourself, knowing that um, you're okay with or without him, but together you could be as strong as you want to be. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's really important. Influences are like we've been talking about a lot of negatives, all the negatives, because influence influences a lot of times have such a negative 
impact on you. But at the same time, there's so, there's so many good things that influences can have on you. Um, Sage, do you have any kind of examples of like good influences that you've had? Yeah, uh, totally. Oh my gosh. I feel like that was another response to, without knowing another response to negative influences was just go and like be proactive and find some positive influences. You know, um, maybe something's not the right fit, whatever you're going through. Um, but you do kind of need to be, you might need to be proactive. Sometimes positive influences are handed to us and sometimes they're not. And um, I know that I, I've struggled um, with basketball my entire life with confidence. I've had, um, I've had some really awesome coaches and um, I've had some pretty negative coaches. And when I found myself in those um, around those very negative coaches and it totally affected my confidence in my own game. You know, they didn't trust me, so I'm not going to trust me either. Um, I really just like, I would put extra work and time in the gym. And that's where I actually met um, some of our family friends. We call them family friends now. Um, they're, uh, they're a family out here when I moved high schools. I moved high schools my junior year. So I did junior and senior year at a different high school. And we totally found, you know, our best friend, basketball family, um, Chad Goldsmith. He was a mentor and he was just kind of my, you know, personal coach for a long time throughout the rest of my high school years and including, um, including uh, uh, college for sure. And it was just so awesome to have him as a resource and say, hey, Chad, you know, I'm struggling with this. Do you have a really good drill in mind? He'd always have an answer. Um, and that was always so awesome. And I felt so fortunate to have that in my life for sure. Yeah. Yes. yeah. We can find those, those mentors and those people that we can look up to and go to when we're struggling. That's, that's a huge confidence builder. And that's that, that piece that we all need to um, learn to find so that, you know, to find, there's that negative that I see that they're totally influencing me in this way that I don't like, but I need to find this positive. I need to find the other side of that so that I can grow, so I can learn and so that I can be confident in myself. And that's, that's amazing that you were able to find that and have that, um, that mentors to be able to do that. Um, and Allie, I like how you, well, when you were mentioning about, you know, your boyfriend, you realize that that's an influence that you can control. Like, so you really like took charge of that. And I really admire that. Whereas, some, and some are totally out of your control for sure. And, um, but the positive ones are, I mean, you can always seek positive influences. Sage, I also wanted to point out um, something that we did when we were in college, because we were in a toxic to say the least, environment um, when it came to our sport and the teammates were toxic the coaches were toxic it was just overall not great and you were my positive influence that kept me going and um, I know that you and I both just like really stood by each other and complained to each other and it just got through all of it. And so sometimes who you're looking for is right there. You just have to find them. You know what I mean? You have to look a little bit further because before you and I really like became friends, I just thought I was going to have no friends and it was going to be a really, really terrible like couple years playing sports. Um, but it was sudden, it was random and it's been four years now and we're still super close and I still see it as one of my really positive influences. Yeah, I, oh my gosh, I agree. And going back to that time, I remember I was very concerned with, because I was always a very goofy teammate and person, but I always was very concerned that my teammates and coaches wouldn't take me seriously. I, that was always a, a mental struggle. Um, because I can be goofy, but still be pretty serious in my sport. You know, like I love that thing. And I always, 
was so happy like to have you know a friend like you Allie as well who was just like like you took me seriously like on the court a hundred percent but we kept things lighthearted when we needed to and and sometimes we really needed to and sometimes that was what we did to survive was find those little you know sparks of of humor or um something we found in common um I know you went through you know a serious like surgery and um coming back is so hard or even going through it and I feel like uh and I was out for um something with my knee for you know a week or two during that time and you and I would run the score clock and um we just we honestly like we just got through it that's what we did and um, but the overall outcome was so much more positive and gaining a lifelong friend, honestly. And even just having those experiences are so valuable, um, especially when we can pass them on and influence other players in our futures or like you're doing totally. Yeah, I'm I mean, I you could I couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> um, and I that goes right into just like utilizing them when you find the positive influence utilize them find someone who believes in you as much as you believe in yourself or find someone who makes you believe in yourself um like sage said once i went through surgery i was in a dark place and it was hard it was really hard to keep wanting to move forward and show up and put in the effort and sage was always right there by my side making sure that i was um pushing and showing up and knowing that it was all going to be okay. So. Yep. It's pretty cool. And so, you know, as we've talked about today and I think wrapping up a little bit, um, outside influences can be positive or negative. Um, it's your choice to which side you're going to go, but to find it within yourself, to find the confidence, to build, um, build, environment around yourself that makes you want to grow, makes you want to succeed and be the very best self that you can be. And so make sure that when you're influenced by others and things that go on in your life, that you just take time to step back and evaluate and figure out what you want out of what's going on. And so sometimes when you're younger, it is hard to see and you just get so bombarded by everything that's going on. But um, hopefully with the tools that we're teaching, we can help you to do that, to step back and to say, okay, this is what's happening and where do I wanna take this? So I am so proud of the two of you. I've watched you both since you got to know each other in college and now and so proud, always a proud mama, of course. So yeah, so Sage, thank you for coming on. Is there anything else that from the topic or anything that we've talked about that you can wanna close out on or any final thoughts? Yeah, um, uh, I just wanna to touch base on making sure to stay present um, if it's game time or practice time. Um, just keeping your thoughts focused. It can be a total challenge, but what is going on in front of you is so much more important than what happened, you know, in the first quarter. Like we got to stay focused on what's happening now. You know, don't lose sight. Um, don't, you know, you're not thinking about your boyfriend or how he broke up with you um, earlier, which might be hard, but just remembering to stay present and keeping your thoughts in line. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course, Sage, um, thank you so much. You had some really, really great um, things to say, some points of views. Um, thank you guys so much for listening, watching. Um, next week, we are going to go over gratitude. And <laughs> don't forget to give us a like and subscribe below. Um, thank you, Sage, again. And we will see you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sage. Thank you, guys.